baby and it's cool. <laughs> so she goes in. Of course, she doesn't knock. She um, finds out the woman that's um, head of the um, of admissions is in there. She barges into their meeting and she's like, I want to know why my kid's not being, you know, you know, not able to be in the school. She's like, I understand, you know, maybe I don't come from you guys' pedigree. She goes into this whole spiel and the woman tells her, it's not you. <laughs> it's your husband. You might want to talk to your husband. And she was like, oh. <laughs> so she leaves. And of course, she starts calling Hudson back to back. She doesn't get an answer. So then she drops the kids off at the penthouse with the nanny. And she heads to his office. He isn't in his office, but on his desk, his desk, he's left the letters and the pictures that came from the stalker. So she realizes that this is clearly a threat and she's so pissed that he hasn't informed her of anything. So, of course, Hudson comes in <laughs> and she demands to know the truth. Like, you know, what is going on? And so um, he tries to keep her from not worrying. But that at this point, she's seen too much and you can't really downplay. He was trying so hard to use his normal tactics of manipulation that work <laughs> so that she would calm down but that just wasn't going to work for her it just wasn't she saw that stuff and she was pissed because clearly this had been going on and she kept it all from him so she was livid um but he didn't care he stuck to the lie <laughs> and that was that so then of course you know when you don't tell her stuff she obsesses and now she's going to do her own investigation so she goes to Mira, um, she goes to Mira's shop and um, she's like trying to see if Mira can give her any info. And Mira was like, no, I don't know anything about it. First of all, you're making this an unsafe situation. She's like, because you, you're not thinking about your children. You're not thinking about my family, my kids, because what if there is a real threat and they're following you, you know? Now they know where I am. Now that, you know, and when she started naming everything, then it kind of clicked for her like, shit, this is bigger than what I've obsessed it about. You know, what I've made it about, you know, other people could be involved and I could be bringing other people involved trying to find out what's going on. And she basically told her, listen, you keep doing stuff. I will call Hudson and I will tell him what you're doing. She's like, because this is nothing to play with. This is no time for you to try and go over his head and try and, you know, figure out stuff, you know. So she felt defeated. She was mad. <laughs> so before she left, though, um, she had, uh, Mira had given her like this really cute uh, Diane Vaughn. I can't think of the last name. Freshman, I can't think of it. But one of her uh, dresses and um, it was a great fit. She was going to buy it. She goes to the register. Stacy's there. And this helpful had the nerve to just be like, you know, are you still after Hudson? And Stacy went off on her. And I was happy she did. Because it was like, how dare you? You know, you can't think straight for two fucking minutes. And you back on your bullshit. I was like, I was glad the girl told her off. Because I was like, girl, if you don't get out my face. That girl was like, everything I went through. And you think I'm going to bother with y'all asses after all this time? You got to think, this is seven years later. Thinking about him. Then we go back to Hudson, which is another thing I liked in this book. Because this was, and I thought it was appropriate. Because it was like, it's the final book. Let's go read from both of their perspectives. I really like that. So we bounce back to Hudson's perspective. He's talking and um, Chandler works for, you know, Hudson uh, Industries and everything. And so um, being that they're going to do that revamp of the club in uh, uh, Atlantic City, uh, you know, they need a, like a like a heavy hitter. They need someone that, you know, it's, they have, you know, success at other clubs um, and that they're going to be able to really almost guarantee success with the revamp of this new club. Well, it's not a new club, but they're just going to revamp it um, pretty much to try and keep the scandal <laughs> away. So uh, Hudson gives him a name, a guy named Satcher Rutherford. 
and he tells him you know why satcher hates him so much <laughs> so they were rivals when they were in school so you know this is someone he grew up with so they always hated each other always competed with each other and so um of course they did the little simple take your girl that type of thing they both did that to each other um satcher actually also <laughs> stole one of his school projects ideas and then he had to pull like an all-nighter to try and get a new idea to present that next day hudson hit back because he wanted this guy out of his life so he created a lie that the father was cheating with like the nanny so he even put like panties and everything like he set the scene and everything right <laughs> i'm like damn this kid is lethal so he did that and that caused i mean the, clearly they already had problems but that sent it over the edge so the parents separated and then the boy got sent to boarding school <laughs> i'm like damn <laughs> he probably still don't like your way <laughs> so <laughs> later that um later that evening um when elena and hudson are home they come to an agreement that you know what we need to handle the threat together he had been thinking like you know what is too much not having her involved in this and you know maybe she can help you know he'd been trying so hard to keep her from it keep her safe from it but it's like you can't let this child spiral because it's not good so at least if she's with you in the investigation you can kind of control it a little bit better than her doing stuff on her own um so they came to that agreement um you know we're just gonna do this together and of course he tells her about all the letters and why he didn't tell her and basically the first two that he got it didn't worry jordan it did worry him some, but it didn't worry Jordan. So if Jordan's the head of his security. And he's not concerned. He didn't think it was something that he needed to go and tell her about and put her on high alert. And so then he told her when the third letter came, he was like, you know, that came like six. What was it? The third letter came, I think, six months after she'd had the twins. And that was when her postpartum was like like an all-time high why the hell would he tell her something like that she couldn't process it you know and so as he begins to tell her why she does understand like you know damn like yeah i get why he didn't tell me you know and so um elena of course automatically thinks celia's behind it i thought that too <laughs> you know i'm like it's celia this helpful is doing the long game it's celia <laughs> And so Hudson, he doesn't really think it's her. And so, but he does agree to like meet up with her because Elena was insistent. Like, no, we need to meet up with her because it's her. So they meet up with her the next day. And um, when they tell her about it, she looks like super shook. Like what? You know? And then of course she denies any involvement in it. And so Elena isn't convinced. So she's like, no, nah, it was you. I know you did it. <laughs> and it was like, you know, she's like, no, I, I wouldn't do that. You know, like no matter what we've done in the past, like, no, I wouldn't do that. Of course, you know, Elena doesn't believe her, but Hudson kind of does. And he has known her longer, but we don't know. Right so later on uh they receive another red envelope the kids had been to like a birthday party in a, in the park and apparently a man brought it up to uh mina i was like oh shoot and the note said there is an enjoyment of correctly predicting how people will react so then i was like damn is it celia like you know they've done so many things to people it's like dang like who could this be and so Elena, you know, she's still convinced it's Celia. And when she gets that letter, she's like, what is the hotel that she's staying in? Because Celia and her husband, they live in England. Um, but because of the engagement, they decided to like extend their stay, throw the engagement party, and then they'll go back home to England. And so she's like, 
I want the info. And she's like, if you don't get it, you know I'll find it. So you might as well give it to me. So he's like, I'm coming with you. So he goes with her. They find a way to get down. They sneak up because they tell a couple. She's like, oh, I'm, I can't find my key. And, you know, she's good at this, you know, because she's a stalker. So <laughs> she's good at these type of games. <laughs> and she even thought in her brain, like, wow, like, hell, me and him could have played some great games. <laughs> me stalking at him with his manipulation. Oh, my gosh. And she's like, no, but we're good. We don't need to do that. Um, so they get up there and he kept telling her, I need you to remain calm. I need you to remain calm. And she heard him, but that didn't even work. That hell for boom, boom, boom. They open the door. She goes in on Celia and she's like, why would you do this? Like, why would you have, why would you take this to a child? Like, what is wrong with you? So all this shouting brings out her husband. And so he's like, you know, what's going on? And. <laughs> Elena's like listen somebody's terrorizing my family they're threatening me and your wife has journals that I think could give us you know uh they used to work together what well, how did she put it she said they had a business relationship um my husband and Celia and they have um she has information that could possibly help us and she doesn't want to give it <laughs> And so the husband's like, um, I, you know, I assure you she has nothing to do with it. He's like, but I, we will have, you know, whatever journals, whatever it is you need, we'll have it here by Tuesday. And she's like, all right, thank you. So they leave. So when they leave out, you got to think Hudson's pissed. She's mad because she's like, Hudson didn't have her back. He's mad because she lost control, even though it did get a result. But, you know, he don't like that. So they sneak, like, he takes her, like, off in the corner, like, when they get out of the hotel room, and he goes, <laughs> he pulls her to the side, and he fucks her. <laughs> and it was funny, because they're, like, fucking each other, and he's telling her why he's mad, and she's telling him why she's mad, and I'm like, this is the funniest thing ever, the funniest. Um. So after that whole debacle, um... They get the journals a couple days later. They go back to Celia's um, when the journals arrive. Celia and Hudson are going to read through them. And then they're going to give the names to Elena. She's going to put them in a spreadsheet because old girl loves a good spreadsheet. So um, while they're there, um, it's Celia's nursing and the baby has a hard time burping. And so um, she, you know, she's like, I have a trick. You know, I can help you. She's like, because I have that same issue with Brent, one of her kids. And so, um, Brett, why did I say Brent? It's Brett because it's a girl. So, um, she goes ahead and she helps birth the baby. And then while she's doing that, Celia and, um, Hudson are talking about old, <laughs> uh, cases. I would call them cases. I don't know what else to call them. So they're talking about an old, uh, case where they had, um, gotten this new couple, newlywed couple. And they were going to break them up. So freaking evil. And so they started laughing about it, right? And so Elena's like, well, I don't think they would think it was too funny. And then they felt bad and shut up. <laughs> I was like, dang. So then while they're talking, um, Celia brings up about the um, seating. And that, you know, she thinks she, she has it. She brought it out. She's like, I got it finalized. I remember what you said that you don't want da 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 so that of course pisses off elena because now she knows you've spoken with her and you didn't tell me about it so she's pissed her and hudson get into like a back and forth because she's mad you know <laughs> and then she storms out they say some hurtful stuff to each other you know and he basically was like of course i wouldn't tell you because i knew you was gonna what you were gonna do you were gonna obsess over it you know and so they just going back and forth just doing their little low blows like it's just like oh my god <laughs> so um she goes to the sky lounge because they're having a um job fair there so she goes and she's there with gwen and liesel's there and um gwen was telling her about the sex club party that she went to and how she watched this woman like escape from being duct taped and stuff like that so it was interesting but you know she was her mind was kind of somewhere else so um then david shows up and he comes in and he's dressed in a suit and she hugs him and 
um, 